as Israel weighs its response after an unprecedented attack by Iran. Hundreds of drones and missiles exploded over Israel last night, the first direct attack by Iran after years of a shadow war. Israel's Iron Dome intercepted most of the weapons. There was little damage, but a young girl was seriously injured by shrapnel. This attack was not unexpected. It comes in response to Israel's bombing of Iran's consulate in Syria two weeks ago. Now, the focus is on what Israel will do next. That decision will be made by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his war cabinet. Israel says it will exact a price from Iran, but world leaders are calling for restraint. Jeff Semple has our top story tonight. Fiery night sky over Israel. A country accustomed to air sirens and attacks has rarely seen anything like this. Iran, which had never directly attacked Israel before, unleashed an unprecedented swarm of explosives, around 350 drones and missiles, sending Israelis, who were sound asleep, scrambling for cover. I think it was quite scary when in the middle of the night we started hearing booming and we didn't know what it was. I mean, we knew what it was. We don't extend it. We don't know what extent it would be. They knew what it was because for days Tehran had warned an attack was coming. Retaliation for a suspected Israeli strike two weeks ago on Iran's diplomatic compound in Syria. But when Israel's sirens finally fell silent Sunday morning, Israelis emerged to find the missiles had missed their mark. Israel not only survived, but we came out of this largely unscathed. Israel says more than 99% of Iran's bombs were intercepted, with help from the U.S., U.K., Jordan, and France. Only a few landed in Israeli territory, causing minor damage to a military base and seriously injuring a young girl. Iran, from the beginning of the war, wants only one thing, to escalate the region. Until now, she worked through her proxies, but now she revealed, trying to escalate the region herself. But many analysts argued the opposite, noting Iran's attack appeared performative, dramatic and unprecedented, but also limited enough to avoid provoking a larger conflict. Iran did it in a very calibrated way, sending these slow drones, hours and hours flying from Iran to, uh, to Israel, giving plenty of time for the Israelis and the United States and others to prepare. Despite the attack's apparent failure, Iran said it had achieved its objectives with no plans for further strikes unless Israel hits back. If the Zionist regime takes any action against Iran, our next operation will be much bigger than this, warned the country's military chief. Israel's war cabinet met Sunday afternoon to discuss its next move. We will build a regional coalition and exact the price from Iran in the fashion and timing that is right for us, said War Cabinet Minister Benny Gantz. Do you think there's any chance that the Israeli government essentially lets this go and, and doesn't respond in a way that risks further escalation? There has to be a cost to the regime, to the leaders, to the officials who prepared and ordered and led this attack. That expected Israeli response represents a consequential crossroads. Israel's hawkish prime minister has rebuffed past requests from allies to de-escalate and seems likely instead to respond with force. The decades-long shadow war between Israel and Iran is now out in the open, and their next moves could spark all-out war in the Middle East. Carolyn? Jeff Semple in London. Thank you. Sam Mednick is a reporter with the Associated Press in Jerusalem and joins us now with more. Sam, you were awake in the middle of the night when the Iranian airstrike started. Tell us, what was that like? I was actually standing right here about 2 o'clock in the morning, and right behind me there were red flares that lit up the sky. This was the defense system. Then I heard two blasts, one after the other, and it was likely the defense system intercepting either these missiles or drones. The alarm started going off after that in Jerusalem and across the country. People were basically hunkering down, waiting to find out when these drones were going to come. Some took about 30 minutes, but others were taking about nine hours. So it was a lot of anxiety and a lot of anxiousness last night people waited for the, the missiles and drones to, to come into Israel. And this morning, what is the sense in Jerusalem where you are in response to those attacks? 
For the most part, it's returned to a sense of calm and normalcy. People are going about their daily lives. People are on the streets. Cars are going. Less cars than usual. Some people are a little bit more nervous. They said that they were staying at home. And Israel has kept the state of alert on. Schools are closed for at least another two days. And it has told people to be vigilant, although the imminent threat has uh, dissipated right now. And how about the war in Gaza? Is there any indication what this attack might mean on that front? This has taken away attention from the war in Gaza, but Israelis are trying to get that attention back on it because they want their hostages back. They want a ceasefire. Hamas said on Sunday, though, that it was rejecting the latest proposal for a ceasefire. Hamas basically says it wants an end to this war in order to get the hostages out. Israel says that this is not something right now they're prepared to do. So it's still wait to be seen what's going to happen, but the families are pressuring the government to bring their hostages home and to get that attention back to this war in Gaza and to the ceasefire. All right, thank you, Sam. Reporter Sam Mednick in Jerusalem tonight. The United Nations Security Council convened emergency talks today where the Secretary General emphasized the need for maximum restraint. The Middle East is on the brink. The people of the region are confronting a real danger of a devastating full-scale conflict. Now is the time for maximum restraint. The White House also confirming U.S. President Joe Biden spoke with Benjamin Netanyahu immediately following the attack. Biden telling Netanyahu not to strike back and to carefully consider next steps. Our Washington bureau chief, Jackson Prosco, covers that part of the story for us tonight. A late-night phone call between the American president and Israeli prime minister may have convinced Israel not to strike back. With Joe Biden reportedly telling Benjamin Netanyahu the U.S. would not participate in any new offensive against Iran. But the president's been very clear. We don't seek a war with Iran. We're not looking for escalation here. We will continue to help Israel defend itself. Biden reportedly urged the Israelis to consider their defense strategy as a win, reminding Netanyahu that Iran only struck an air base in southern Israel and not civilian targets. A senior Biden administration official told reporters that Israel needs to think through carefully what it does next. It's just an extraordinary uh, example of military superiority that, that Israel demonstrated to the whole world last night. Uh, and I think Israel also demonstrated that it has friends. Though the U.S. is steadfast in its support of its close ally, the White House has worked to contain the impulses of both countries. Mr. President, what is your message to Iran in this moment? Don't. It's not clear whether Biden's warnings may have helped shape Iran's strategy, which involved mostly easy-to-strike drones and appeared to come with plenty of advanced warning. It's also not certain whether Biden's pressure on Israel will stave off future retaliation. This may allow Prime Minister Netanyahu to say, well, my arm was twisted. I really wanted to hit back, but, you know, I, I had to acknowledge that we do have an important friend here that we should sometimes listen to. Iran's actions may also reshape opinion toward Israel amid growing condemnation of its actions in Gaza, reinforcing Western support just as it seemed to be waning. The tension may also prove to be an unlikely win for another U.S. ally, Ukraine. The attack on Israel has prompted the House of Representatives to take up a long-delayed aid package to Israel and Ukraine. The vote to authorize billions of dollars in support could come as early as this week. Carolyn? Our Washington Bureau Chief Jackson Prosco, thanks. Well, as mentioned, one remarkable aspect of Iran's airstrikes against Israel is the fact that it's the first time that it's happened. But for years, Iran has been funding other groups that have been attacking Israel in a shadow war. Redmond Shannon takes a look at what Iran is trying to achieve and what it might do next. A different kind of fire lighting up the skies of Tehran early Sunday. State-backed TV showing Iranians cheering the historic launching of rockets and drones toward Israel. We hope this attack continues to the point that Israel is destroyed, says this woman. But elsewhere, many panicked about what a war could mean, lining up at gas stations in a country already struggling with high inflation. Iran's foreign minister says his country has no intention of continuing the attacks, but it will respond if Israel responds. Iran says its attack is revenge for the April 1st bombing of an Iranian consulate in Syria. It killed senior Iranian commanders and is widely blamed on Israel. It's not about retaliation or revenge. It's about 
the interest of the Iranian regime to make sure that it projects uh, deterrence capacities so it could continue its aggression and expansion policy across the Middle East. Iran denies Israel's right to exist, funding Hamas, Hezbollah and other proxies for years. But its government needed to consider the consequences of a direct war with a country backed by the United States, making sure Israel knew the attacks were coming so it and its allies could more easily intercept the attack. Whereby Iran sends missiles that don't cause any casualties but still show some sort of strength and Biden wins by intercepting nearly every single single one of those missiles. Analyst Sami Hamdi says Iran's move will prove popular across the Middle East. What Iran wants to show is that in firing those missiles, it is the only Muslim power standing up realistically for the Palestinians. Ultimately, Iran is gambling that the U.S. will be able to stop Israel from hitting back. If Israel ignores Washington, the Tehran regime will have some very sobering decisions to make. Carolyn? Redmond Shannon in London, thank you. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau also condemned Iran's attack last night while reaffirming his support for Israel. Mackenzie Gray has more on the Canadian reaction and the Canadians in the region. I woke up at three in the morning because we did get word that 400 uh, missiles were headed towards us. That's Tal Ben Simon, one of the 35,000 Canadians living in Israel. She says the country's been on high alert for the past number of days, waiting for an Iranian attack. So last night for me wasn't, wasn't, wasn't the end of the world, even though it almost was. Last night's address from the Prime Minister at the annual parliamentary press gallery dinner would normally be full of jokes, but it took a serious turn. These attacks demonstrate yet again the Iranian regime's disregard for peace and stability in the region. We support Israel's right to defend itself and its people from these attacks. Justin Trudeau quickly leaving to focus on Iran's attack on Israel, meeting with his national security team and with the G7 today. The leaders from the group of advanced economies saying in a statement, we express our full solidarity and support to Israel and its people and reaffirm our commitment towards its security. The Canadian government has warned against traveling to Israel, which just got tougher as Air Canada cancelled its Toronto to Tel Aviv flights, blaming government and regulatory restrictions outside of their control. The airline just reinstated the flight after a six-month hiatus just a few days ago. Israel and many other Middle Eastern countries closed their airspace last night, but have now reopened it after the Iranian attack took place. But that could change once again if Israel decides to retaliate. 